Hello, uh, this is about iPicky and if you just type iPicky.com into your Google search or whatever you will end up with this screen here. Do not be tempted to t click on this thing or any of these, just this one here. Start editing. Click on that and you will open the first page and this is what it looks like, mostly empty and let me explain this is where you can upload photographs from your computer this is where you can make as it says a collage and you need then to be able to have operated this thing uh, requires multiple photo uploads etc etc uh, so that's useful I suppose um, this takes pictures from your webcam this blends this is layers basically layers as it shows there so you can have a number of layers, not fully investigated yet. Uh, this will uh, enable you to use a paintbrush on a screen and paint just as you would in Photoshop. Um, that I haven't looked at. This, on the other hand, from Flickr, uh, is very useful. It enables you to take photographs from your own Flickr site, or from any other Flickr site, I suppose. If you click on that, this is what happens. You get a connecting to Flickr and here are the Flickr pictures uh, but we're going to start here uh, in a normal manner click upload photo then you have to go off and find um, some sort of photograph from somewhere uh, let's try a date like the 17th of June and uh, we'll get say a picture that looks possibly too wrong or exciting but needs some attention maybe that one there I see it's come out sideways so there it is it's a bit dark but one and one of the things it's filled this frame beautifully no matter what the actual size is so let's rotate using this uh, menu on the left which you'll no you notice is labeled basic for all those and then advanced and then underneath that there are some adjustments and below that color and filters so you really basically start at the top fix image if you click on that and you wait a moment you can see the change if you like that you click the word apply okay then you might want to resize it for whatever purpose at the moment you've you've got them all only in pixels and percentage and there's a box here constrained proportions which means that the ratio of the sides, the, the, the shape of the picture stays the same if that is ticked when you alter these. So we can change this either with a slider or we can highlight them and type in a number like that. So let's apply that. Now we notice it looks smaller here. That is the difference between the original and this. Click that and it fills the screen in exactly the same manner. We better now rotate, I think, before we go to crop. Click. And you've got these four buttons here. These are for rotating and these are for flipping. That is to say, turning left to right and right to left. If I do that, you'll see that effectively it's upside down the other way around. So we need to um, flip to get that upright. We need to click it, this, this one, like so. And if you flip that one, it will be back to front so to speak. Uh, whilst you're here you've got the straighten button. Now this uh, drain pipe isn't quite parallel, neither of these, so we can use this button here to slide it straight. Now you immediately start to click on it you'll see a, a grid which enables you to visually put it straight in your mind and there are beautifully upright. Click apply and the picture is now straightened. Now you may want to crop that so Let's take the crop tool. Now again, you could have have it constrained by drop, clicking on the drop-down box here and clicking on original. But you might wish to have a square picture, so you can click on that, and then you're constrained only to a square uh, arrangement. You can move it any way you like, and you can increase the size of the square up to the limit of the frame. Uh, or you might want a golden ratio which is ideal, the ideal shape, aesthetically speaking. You can do it to specific sizes in inches, 
the Facebook cover, Twitter, but and so on, whatever these are. Um, even a YouTube thumbnail size, and that's interesting. The YouTube has asked me. Oh no, it's not. It's Flickr that has asked me to change my thumbnails. Right. I don't know what Zanga is. Blogger, Google, all sorts of things, all the way down, and then I think that's about the limit. Oh no, just maybe that's it. So we usually use no constraints, and then we can drag these out wherever we wish. So let's assume we don't want so much road, and we don't want so much to the left, and we don't want the top particularly. So just leave a little bit like that. Having decided that's what we want, you click apply. At the top here, you will notice an arrow, which is an undo. So you can click on that and you go right back to the original. One other thing I would recommend is on the on this top up here is all these various things like home page, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, Google Plus, iPicky Blog, Help, Contact Us, and this one. If you click on that, you can see you get rid of all of the all of the extraneous what's it at the top and the bottom. They all disappear, and you end up with this. And you can just concentrate on what you've got here. To get out of it, as it said across there, you press the escape button. So, how are we doing? We've got to crop. We've done that. We've done that. We don't do we need to know. We don't need to do anything on exposure or colour or hue and saturation. We might want to sharpen it. In which case, we need to zoom in a bit to 100%. In fact, down at the bottom right, we give you the size 94%, it says at the moment, and there's a little grey arrow. But you can do it with the mouse wheel. But if you haven't got the mouse wheel, click on this little grey triangle, and this little bar flips out. There's a one to one thing here, and a zoom to uh, fill the screen there. And then you've got this slider bar here. And when you do that, you see another little screen showing you the picture, and you can move that about so you can navigate, just like a navigator, whatever it is. So if you go to 335%, or whatever, you can do all of that. So let's make it one to one, and then um, we can go to the sharpening and see what happens if you whack it up, whack it right to the top. We can see that this the wall on here where the sun is grazing has shown up wonderfully well, but it's rather too overdone, if anything. It looks a bit sort of artificial. Go back to the original. And that's about that's about right, isn't it? Clarity is another what control here. Now clarity, let's move sharpness down to zero again, move clarity up, and move that right up to the top. Now that is rather overdone as well, but well, it does increase the contrast and effectively the sharpness as well. If we go from there to there, it makes the whole picture significantly more interesting. So we'll do a bit of both, I think, like that. Perhaps ease back on the sharpening a bit to get it. So there we are. Let's assume that's OK. Now, if you wanted, you've got the fade button, and you can move that across and actually get back to the picture before you did anything. And one other thing to notice here is this little icon here. This is meant to indicate a paintbrush. If you click on that, you get another little box coming out here called Effect Mask. And if you move the, the mouse over the wall or whatever here, in this case, you can see the size of the brush. That's, that's alterable by this thing here. And uh, just in case you want to do it, what, it you're, what you'll do now, if you paint over this here on the wall there, I'm actually removing the effect that I've just put on, the sharpening is now being removed. So remove that part. Uh, that's using this section, because it's got a blue line around it. You click on Effect, and that's got a blue line around it, and I can reverse what I've just done, like that. And generally I find that the brush strength is always set to 100, which is always, almost always, too strong. So I would reduce that to say, well, normally about 10%. Uh, but that's something like that. Now if I now 
click on erase to remove the sharpening from this woman's back I think is is a problem it looks much smoother when I do that and on her legs what else does it look too strong I think most of it everywhere else looks fine uh, so let's assume that's okay we click apply now we can now move on to other sections if you wish there's curves a superb tool this one again it's got a little brush you notice and it's got various sections as default if you click on this you'll find there's various settings presets if you like that do all this sort of thing so you can have a velvia version of your picture just by clicking on that it will set the curves to suit what it thinks is velvia if you click on that the probably the greens in there will increase significantly yes they do and that's on the left hand side now you can see the shape of that and if you click the drop down box you can see the effect that each channel is being asked to do and they're all as you call it well you call, you call it an S shape um, and if you don't like that effect which I think is a bit strong you could remove it slowly but surely with this fade has it gone? It's gone. <laughs> Did it, get out? Did it uh, yeah, let's just cancel that and do that perhaps. Yes, well, I don't know whether it did it or not. It slipped up there. Colour override. Oh, look at that. So you learn something every day. You could have a, a slightly weakened coloured picture there if you wished. But I think that's quite acceptable then. Let's have a look what other things we've got. Ambrotype, that's a um, these are monochrome ones often colder colours which will look like that or warmer colours which will be the opposite it's just too much isn't it back to default because the default is so good here that we don't need to uh, early colour fade good heavens yes that's us representing an early colour photograph <laughs> rag for colour film rag for CT18 well, I think uh, we'll, we could go on like this, could we not? Let's think, is there anything useful here? Dark shadows, that will make them even darker. Fill light would make it brighter. As, again, it's a bit overdone. Here's the result. Now, one thing while you're here is you can move them out yourself. You don't have to stick with what it says. Um, and one of the things you can do, if you don't like having three in this case two swatch rather if you, you can just flick them off you drag them off like that and just drag them off and they will remove themselves the various things that this will do for instance you can move the left hand side like that and you can move the right hand side like that if you move them to the middle or even down to there so that they're opposite each other you get a grey so if you move them to this bit of grey uh, this section here in the middle you get a mid grey and up here you get a, a sort of quarter grey so, but if you just swap them right over you end up with a negative or you could just move the, them down like that to get black and then move the middle bit up like that and you get this half negative, half positive so the, the black skirt, the shadows and so on are all still black and dark the bright bits are still bright aren't they but definitely negative parts here as well so you've got a mixture here that would be called solarization and again with this you can go from nothing bar it back to the original picture so you can with the fade control you can do all manner of things so you have that in monochrome as well uh, by the color override control so there you go that's a quick overview of the curves I think we'll stop at that point and continue later